<clears throat> well, hi, Bryn. Um, it is Sunday. Can you see my breath? Cold out. I'm sitting on our porch. Uh, I don't think you've ever been to our house. Um, but it's cold. And um, I am finally getting back to you regarding your video of uh, having visited uh, the University of Oregon. And I've been thinking uh, actually quite a bit about what you were saying um, about why uh, part of it was uh, obviously what college to go to, um, why to go to which college uh, you were looking at, um, and then feeling like they were selling you something. Um, you also said something else, which of course was they want you to do what they want you to do, not what you want you to do. Well, that is the essence of selling something, of course, is trying to get somebody to buy something that you want them to buy, not that they want to buy. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have to sell it, right? So, you know, when you went to the University of Oregon and they were trying to sell you on their school, I guess the important thing to realize is that, um, um, well, it's, you know, even though it's a large state university, it's business. Um, they have to show not necessarily a profit, but they do have to stay within budget. Uh, their only revenue stream, other than what they get allocated from the state, of course, is tuition. And you only get tuition if you attract students. So you have to make it look good. You have to sell it to them. Um, you have to give them the old rah-rah football, um, you know, go ducks in order to get people to come. So um, don't, I guess, don't be too put off by the sales salesmanship. Um, I think that's just the nature of uh, higher ed, especially, um, you know, with this economy, even the private schools are having to, um, they have what's called a, what is it, a no blind or a something blind admissions policy. Um, and even, you know, the, the private uh, heavily endowed, um, oh, I love that phrase, heavily endowed. Anyway, the private heavily endowed schools um, um, are, are having problems and, and they're going to have to sell themselves and try to get people to come but um, you know as I'm sure your dad can tell you and your mom can tell you um, no matter what college you go to they're going to want you to do what they want you to do not necessarily what you want to do I mean that's the essence of going to an organized um, you know an, a, an organized program an organized academic in institution um, is that they have a core curriculum, they have GEDs, they have that, you know, everything that everybody has to go through. Um, and even when you get into um, your major, deep into your major classes, um, and grad school, you know, it's mostly about doing what they want you to do. It's figuring out how to do what your, um, uh, you know, your graduate advisor wants you to do what, trying to figure out what he or she wants and meeting those expectations and getting through it so you can get beyond that and to do what you really want to do. So the question becomes, why go through, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you have, what, a couple of years of college done already, right? So why go through two years of undergraduate school, a couple, three, four years of graduate school, or in the case of your mother, like nine months of graduate school, which includes your PhD, um, in order to do what you want to do. So unless you value the degree in and of itself, or unless you really think that that is going to be the door through which you have to pass in order to get to where you want to be, then, you know, the question becomes why why go in the first place? Um, you know, and, it, and it's a question that I think is different really for everybody. Everybody has a different answer to it. Uh, I think some people go to college, and many people go to college, especially at the age of 18, purely out of uh, inertia. They're already in school, that's just what they're going to go do, and they go on um, you know, to college at the age of 18. It could be the right or the wrong decision for them. Um, you know, and There's some people who don't go until they're 24 or 34 or 54 to get their undergraduate degree. Um, you know, Typically what I have seen is obviously the people who are 34 and 54 and 84 are, are slightly more focused. They know why they want to do it. But even then, they're not, you know, they're not doing exactly what they want to do. They're doing what, you know, the major professor wants them to do or what the 
degree field wants them to do or what the department wants them to do. Um, and so if, you, if you're feeling that struggle now, um, you know, again, you have to resolve that somehow. If you want to go to college, you're going to have to resolve, you know, the issues of... Hey, Preston, yeah. can you shut the door? Because it's really cold. Um, you're going to have to resolve the issue of doing what other people want you to do. I mean, that really, um, you know, that, that's always that struggle between how do you make use of somebody else's assets, whether it's an academic institution, whether it is um, a job place. Um, you're always going to have to answer to that supervisor, that department chair, that major professor, whatever it is, parents, you know, who you're going to have to negotiate with them essentially and say, okay, this is what I want, you know, this is what you want, how do we, you know, give and take a little bit of that, and depending on, you know, depending on who that supervisor happens to be will dictate how much you get versus how much they get. You know, there are some times when you're going to get squat, and you've got to simply do what they want you to do because, um, you know, especially in academia, there are some professors or chairs or what have you who are gods, um, at least in their own minds. Um, but while you're in their class, they are your god, and that's all there is. There's no way around that. So take your class, get through it, and get out. Um, but there's something I, you know that I noticed you said, um, again, actually you said it three times in this video, once at the start, once in the middle, and once at the end, and that was, I want to write. So, you know, what I've been thinking in my mind is, what is it about going to a university or a college that's going to help you to write? Um, you know, I can think of a few reasons. It's going to give you some skills. It's going to let you practice the skills. Um, but... You know, but how, I guess the question is, how is going to any institution, University of Oregon, Whitman, Holyoke, how are those places going to help you to write? Well, maybe being around people who are good writers or who are going to kick you in the ass and get you motivated to write. Um, you know, that's, that's all I can really think of, you know, because there's nothing about having a BA that makes you a writer. You know, I'm sure Stephen King can tell you that. I'm sure... Any writer can tell you that. There's nothing about having a degree that's going to um, um, that's going to you know suddenly make you a writer. In fact, I would suggest that the more talented the writer, or the more motivated the writer that you are, the more you are going to um, I guess operate counter to what the degree field wants you to do, or what the institution wants you to do. Because now you know what you want to do. You want to do your own thing. Um, and I, I understand that completely. I understand doing wanting to do your own thing. Um, and um, but there's always that that slight concession that you have to make to society. Again, whether society is your family, your community, um, your academic academic institution. Um, you know, there's always that. I mean, it's uh, no no different than you know in that respect being a Baha'i. You know, there's. There's ways that you feel like you can express that, you know, but there's also, you know, you have to allow for some greater direction than just your own motivation. Um, so, but again, why go to college? What is it that's going to make you a writer? What makes a good writer? Is it writing? Writing and writing and writing? Writing and exposing yourself to people who are going to give you ideas back. So, do you have to spend tuition money in order to get that? Is there somewhere you can go that you're going to be around writers and that you're going to write? The other thing that makes a good writer, of course, is, is experience. Life experience is trying to understand, you know, essentially writing is the ability to interpret um, the human experience and perhaps even reinterpret the human experience and put that on paper um, and, and in some inspiring way, um, whether you're inspiring fear, <laughs> in the case of Stephen King, or, um, you know, or, or whatever it is. But, you know, I can see my time's running out. I'm going to have to cut this video off. But anyway, um, keep thinking about it. Keep struggling with it. Uh, maybe you won't have an answer in the next year. Maybe you won't have an answer in the next 10 years. Um, that's the way it is. Good luck.